In 1900, near the Greek island of Antikythera, at a depth of 184 feet, divers discovered the wreck of a Roman cargo ship. And among the wreckage was a very strange mechanism that looked like a gear. The device was named the Antikythera Mechanism. The instrument is believed to have been designed and built by Greek scientists and dates from about 87 BC. For decades, after divers recovered this piece of wreckage from the sunken ship, scientists have never been able to figure out what the piece might be from. X-rays showed that the device was supposed to reproduce the movements of the celestial bodies. Holding it in your hands, you could track the trajectories of the sun, moon, and planets with impressive accuracy. One researcher called it an ancient Greek computer. But some scientists and writers, such as Eric von Daniken, claimed that the mechanism came from an alien spaceship. The mystery of the mechanism's origin would have remained unsolved if, in 2006, Michael Edmonds from Cardiff University in Wales and his team hadn't published a computer tomography of the fragments, revealing more details about the inner workings of the device. The Antikythera mechanism was similar in size to a mantle clock, and the pieces of wood found on the fragments suggest that it was housed in a wooden case. Like the watch, the case probably had a large round dial with rotating hands. There was a knob on the side, the turn of which moved the hands of the mechanism. Instead of hours and minutes, the hands displayed celestial time. One hand for the sun, one for the moon, and one for each of the five planets visible to the naked eye. A rotating black and silver ball was showing the phase of the moon. The inscriptions explained which stars rise and set on a particular date. There were also two dial systems on the back of the case, each with a pin that followed its own spiral groove, like a needle on a turntable. One of those dials was the calendar. Another showed the time of lunar and solar eclipses. But how the ancient Greeks were able to make such a complex mechanism more than 2,000 years ago is still a mystery. But this is far from the most amazing ancient device that scientists have found. We will tell you how the ancient Romans mastered nanotechnology. Why are these amazing mechanisms found all over Europe? And why can't we still replicate Damascus steel? When the Crusaders reached the Middle East, they discovered that their enemies were armed with blades made of very unusual steel. Their swords could slice a feather mid-air, and yet were very strong. Blades were decorated with an unusual watery pattern. When the knights brought sample blades back to Europe, no one could make such steel. Because we are talking about Damascus steel, the most mysterious metal on our planet. For centuries, Perhaps since the time of Alexander the Great in the 4th century BC, the armorers who made swords, shields, and armor from this steel kept their method a closely guarded secret. The secrets of Damascus steel were known to weapon makers in many parts of the ancient world, especially in Persia, where some of the best examples were produced. And the earliest pieces made of this steel date back to the 4th century BC. With the emergence of firearms, the secret was lost and never fully rediscovered. Scientists believe that the secret of steel is in the hardening. Persian legend has it that the best Damascus steel blades were tempered with dragon blood. But one Pakistani whose family had kept a Damascus steel sword for generations said that his family's sword had been tempered by Afghan artisans in donkey urine. Some medieval blacksmiths recommended the use of red-haired boy's urine or the urine of a three-year-old goat fed only ferns for three days. But today's metallurgists say that this does not affect the quality of steel. But they suspect that the main requirement is a very high carbon content. It should be 1-2% to compared to only a fraction of 1% in conventional steel. Another key element in the production of Damascus blades seems to have been forging at relatively low temperatures, about 1,700 degrees Fahrenheit. After molding, the blades were apparently reheated to about the same temperature and then quickly cooled, similar to hardening in liquid. 
it is safe to say that the ancient Roman civilizations had its secrets. One such enigma is the Roman dodecahedron. It is a hollow bronze object of ten sides, form with twelve flat pentagonal facets. It is found throughout Europe and dates back to the 2nd to 4th centuries AD. The first dodecahedron was discovered in 1739 and put all antique dealers in a bind because no one could figure out what it was. But soon, other dodecahedrons were discovered in different sizes and construction. Most dodecahedrons range in size from 1.5 to 5 inches and weigh from 35 to 580 grams. Each pentagonal surface contains a hole, but the sizes of these holes were almost always different within both a single dodecahedron and between different pieces. Each of the five vertices has a ball-shaped protrusion. This object is smaller than a tennis ball and looks more like a dice. More than 100 dodecahedrons were excavated on the territory of present-day Belgium, Croatia, France, Germany, Great Britain, Hungary, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, and Switzerland. The northernmost find was made at Adrian's Wall in northern Britain. The southernmost was at Arles in France. Interestingly, not a single dodecahedron was found in the East Roman Empire. The strangest part is that Roman records do not mention this object at all, which baffles scholars leaving them to figure out for themselves what this device was used for. Dodecahedrons mostly appear in Gallo-Roman lands. Having this in mind, the 12 pentagonal sides can have some cosmic significance. However, divination and astrology would have been almost impossible with this device because the handles won't allow for turning it over and there weren't any inscriptions on the walls that could be deciphered as such. Perhaps they were used for astronomical calculations, with the sun shining through the holes at different times of days. Some scholars have suggested creative uses for this object, from knitting to use as children's toys. Others believe that this tiny hollow object was worn simply as an amulet. Conspiracy theorists naturally believe that these objects are of alien origin, but none of these theories have much credibility in their claims. A final assumption remains that the object was sacred and important for religious practice. A dodecahedron found in Crete was made of rhinestone, and on its 12 faces we found Greek letters instead of holes. Despite all the world's knowledge at our disposal, it is difficult for present-day people to ascertain what the use of this 2,000-year-old artifact was. Perhaps at some point, a closer study will reveal the secrets of this little orb, which has become one of archaeology's greatest mysteries. But these are far from all the mysteries of the ancient Roman civilization, because this 1,600-year-old cup shows that the Romans were pioneers in nanotechnology. This glass bowl, depicting King Lurgus of Thrace, appears jade green when lit from the front, and bloody red when lit from the back. This property puzzled scholars for decades after a museum acquired the bowl in the 1950s. The mystery was not solved until 1990, when researchers in England carefully studied the shards under a microscope and discovered that Roman artists were pioneers of nanotechnology. They impregnated the glass with silver and gold particles, crushed until they were about 50 nanometers in diameter less than one thousandth the size of a grain of table salt. The exact mix of precious metals suggests that the Romans knew what they were doing. This ancient nanotechnology works like this. When light falls on them, the electrons of the metal particles vibrate in such a way that they change color depending on the position of the observer. The making of the Lycurgus cup is one of the many ancient crafts lost to time. Only one example left intact of this craft remains, the cup itself. It took us another 1,500 years in order to be able to make a color-changing glass again. As for how much more of the amazing knowledge of ancient civilizations has been lost to us 
and perhaps never to be replicated, will forever remain a mystery. On June 15, 1752, Benjamin Franklin set up an experiment proving that lightning is just a powerful electric discharge. After that, mankind became closely acquainted with electricity and gradually began to use it for their needs. But certain findings demonstrate that progress in mankind's history has not been a continuous one, and the notion that society in the past lived in primitive conditions is only a myth because scientists perhaps found a battery which is more than 2,000 years old. The device was discovered in what is now Kuju Rabu, Iraq in 1936 and was called the Baghdad Battery. It was a 5-inch vessel, the neck of which was filled with bitumen, and an iron rod with traces of corrosion was led through it. Inside the vessel was a copper cylinder with an iron rod inside. Scientists hypothesized that once the Baghdad battery was filled with acid or alkali, it could create an electrical voltage of 1 volt. The silver-plated vases of the National Museum of Iraq from 2500 BC also testify to this. The researchers suggest that the silver on the vases was applied by an electric method in which this battery served a major role. But this theory is controversial among scientists. Some believe that the device cannot be used as a battery due to the lack of electrical connections. Although the iron rod did protrude beyond the asphalt plug, the copper tube did not, making it impossible to connect a wire to it to close the circuit. But some scientists believe that it is not a battery at all. The artifacts are similar to other objects believed to be storage vessels for sacred scrolls. Since these vessels were exposed to the elements, it is possible that some papyrus or parchment inside has completely rotted away and left a trail of oxidation. Today, it is difficult to say with certainty whether it was a battery or not, but in any case, Humanity is increasing accepting the fact that development of human civilizations is by no means an upward trend, but rather a roller coaster with ups and downs. For example, the abrupt descent in such a roller coaster may well be considered the great migration of people, which caused the fall of the Roman Empire and its culture, and the Bronze Age catastrophe, an unknown event that caused the highly developed civilizations of Crete and the Middle East to disappear. If you want us to make a video about it, then write to us in the comments. Also, do not forget to like our video and subscribe to the channel. There are a lot of interesting things waiting for you here. See you around.